Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for my final Oscar predictions. Sorry for my hair, but I just took a shower, so my bad. Uh, but I didn't have any other time to record this today, so yeah. So we are about two weeks away from the Oscars, a little, a little less than two weeks, and the nominations are out, and the majority of the shows that have happened that are going to matter towards the Oscars have happened because the Spirit Awards don't don't really matter. They just don't. So these are my should win, will win winner predictions. So let's get started with adapted screenplay. Now this one was interesting because I considered Aaron Sorkin's Steve Jobs screenplay a snub, and I kind of thought that I was going to win, so I had to go back to the drawing board on that one. And it came down between Room and The Big Short. My should win is Room. Um, because the same author wrote the screenplay, which is rare, you know, they usually hand it over to someone else, but this author was confident, and Madonahue uh, came and wrote the script, and it was an extremely well done script. Like, my god, the way that she put that together from that book was really good. But, it's not going to win. What will win is The Big Short. The Big Short is the newest up-and-comer. I think it's in the top three of could win for best picture, um, but it won't. And, um, to be in the top three of best picture means you have to have one of the best screenplays. And it's going to win best adapted screenplay, just because of all of the things it's getting with the Writers Guild Awards, and the Directors Guild Awards, and the Producers Guild Awards, and all of these crazy things it's getting, I think it's going to win adapted screenplay, even though Steve, Steve Jobs should have. Uh, original screenplay. This one was actually kind of interesting, uh, for my, my should win, because I was looking at the nominees, and I was kind of thinking, you know, snubs and, and surprises and all that, and Inside Out wasn't nominated for best picture. I think Inside Out screenplay was fantastic. I think that somehow it appealed to children. I couldn't see it, but somehow kids sat through that movie and enjoyed it. And I loved it as well, and I'm not that much of a child. I mean, I'm not a grown man, but I'm, you know. And so, I think Inside Out screenplay should win. It's been a long time since an animated movie has won a screenplay award. I did Up, I think Up might have, I think Up might have won, but... If any animated movie is to win screenplay, it's got to be this. It's going to be this one, um, but it's not going to win. What will win is Spotlight. Spotlight screenplay was extremely well done. Uh, put together by Josh Singer and Tom McCarthy, it was just it. It made you see what was really happening through a few different lenses, through people involved with it, through the people that were writing the story and victims. And I thought that was really interesting that you could see all these different perspectives and be kind of interested in each of them, and the Academy loves that kind of stuff, and it's going to win Best, best Original Screenplay. So now we're getting into the acting categories. Fun. So, Supporting Actress, um, I kind of battled over this one for a while. This wasn't the hardest one to pick, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I think in my nominations one, I predicted Rooney Mara to win, and that was before any uh, shows had actually happened, and that's changed. But let me talk about Should Win first. My Should Win something in my eye. My should win is Jennifer Jason Leigh for The Hateful Eight. When you look at Quentin Tarantino's movies, you can tell that they're usually dialogue based. And yes, every now and then, you know, there were a lot of interesting shootouts and things in Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight. But you look at it and it's mainly dialogue driven and cast driven. This movie focused around eight people specifically that were The Hateful Eight. And, you know, Jennifer Jason Leigh was in pretty much every scene, and she was the shining light of every scene, and kind of took each scene away from the other eight or the other seven people in it. Jennifer Jason Lee shown in every single scene. Her lines were hilarious. She delivered them fantastically. Even the physical things she had to do were fantastic. There were just certain things that happened throughout the film, and she she stole every scene easily. Not even a cont. She was phenomenal. But I haven't seen the Danish Girl. But I have seen all the award shows where she's won. Yes, Kate Winslet won the BAFTA and the Golden Globe. She's not going to win the Oscar. Because the Academy, you can tell, does not like Steve Jobs because of its lack of, of screenplay nomination as well as, you know, picture nomination. Um, I don't, That's why they're not going to give it to her. What are they going to give it to, however? It's going to be Alicia Vikander for The Danish Girl. Having won the SAG and a couple of other things, she kind of surpassed Rooney Mara, slowly but surely, 
as it came to Rooney Mara not winning anything and Alicia Vikander winning things. Um, if there's going to be a spoiler, it'll probably be Rooney Mara. But as of right now, Alicia Vikander seems like the one that's going to win. I didn't see the Danish girl. I think she probably should have been nominated or won for Ex Machina, which she was fantastic in. But that's just generally what I see her winning in. I Again, if anyone else, if they call Rooney Mara's name, it wouldn't be a huge shocker to me. But Alicia Vikander is the front runner now. Supporting actor. My god. This is the this was just the, the toughest one. It's such a close race. All right, first of all, I'm going to talk about Mark Ruffalo. I'm going to talk about Mark Ruffalo because I've come out about this and I've said that I don't think Mark Ruffalo nor Rachel McAdams should have been nominated for Spotlight because here they they just talk. They just talk. There's no layers or depth to their character. They are given a great screenplay and they 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 do it well, but they're just talking. And Mark Ruffalo's freakout scene was kind of cheesy, guys. I'm sorry, it was and. He, again, they just they just talk, they just talk. If I were to nominate, if I were to replace him with anyone else from Spotlight, it would have been Keaton. Keaton had a couple of moments where, you know, you believed he was this guy. I didn't. I just looked at Mark Ruffalo and I saw Mark Ruffalo talking. I didn't see a different character. I don't care what kind of haircut he got. He looked. It was just Mark Ruffalo. I totally would have replaced him with Jacob Tremblay. Or Idris Elba. 100%. But probably Jacob Tremblay. I love Idris Elba, but Jacob Tremblay. So the other four. I'm, I'm going to talk about Shedwin. I'm going to talk about Shedwin first. So it came down to who is the best supporting actor. Not the best performance necessarily, but the best supporting actor. I kind of ruled out Christian Bale. Because Christian Bale w had a great performance. He had a phenomenal performance. But he doesn't share any screen time. Any. With Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, or Brad Pitt, the other top build characters or actors, excuse me. So I couldn't really see him as being a supporting actor when he's not really given a chance to take scenes from any of the other performances. So I kind of ruled out Christian Bale. Um, Tom Hardy. What I loved about Tom Hardy's supporting performance was it, it was almost like Christian Bale's, but he shared a little bit of screen time with Leonardo DiCaprio. But when he didn't, it still worked. And here's why. Leonardo DiCaprio's performance was totally physically based. It was, he had a couple of lines, and the majority of them weren't even in English. Tom Hardy, his entire performance was dialogue driven. He, he was the one doing the talking, he was the one kind of almost developing the story on the other side where DiCaprio was out in the woods, Hardy's back with Donald Gleason, and kind of progressing the story there. And the two of their performances just meshed so well to create this dynamic. And that's a supporting supporting performance to me. Mark Rylance had a different kind of great performance. He was subtle. He was, while he, you know, kind of just talked, there was layers to his performance. There was depth. He's this, he's a spy, supposedly. They don't really tell you. He's a spy, supposedly. He's a Russian spy. And everyone in America is against him. Everyone wants him dead. Everyone wants him, either, most of them want him dead. And he is just generally the most likable guy. You just like this guy. And you kind of catch yourself. Like, I'm not really... I think I'm supposed to, but I, sh I shouldn't like this guy. And he pulls that off really well. You just... You like him. And he's not supposed to... Well, he's supposed to be likable, but... In the real world, you wouldn't really want to like him. You'd be going against the... He was going against the entire country. And he did it so well. So... And then you got Stallone. Who... I don't think we've seen a great performance out of Stallone since 79. And the first Rocky. He's been doing crappy, garbage action movies for a, a really long time now. Rocky Balboa was in like 2006. And then he came back with this, and a lot of people weren't very optimistic about them making another Rocky movie. I sure wasn't. I... When they first announced that they were making a movie about Apollo Creed's son, I was like, that is such a money grab. And then Stallone signed on to be Rocky, and I was like, come on. And then that first trailer dropped. Holy shit, that first trailer dropped. And the movie skyrocketed, and the movie was fantastic, and Stallone was fantastic. Stallone had more depth as the character of Rocky than he had ever had. We had seen him age, we had seen pretty bad things happen to his character, and he's not, you know, the most jolly happy guy anymore he doesn't do fighting he runs a restaurant 
and he's pulled back into the action by Apollo Creed's son, and we see what happens to him during that, and it was just really well done. And it came down to Stallone and Hardy for me. And I picked... I picked Tom Hardy. I did. I picked Tom Hardy because while Stallone was great, there were scenes where Michael B. Jordan just shone the entire way through and Stallone was kind of left back in the, in, in the dark. And that never really happened with Tom Hardy. You know, Tom Hardy, when Tom Hardy and DiCaprio share scenes, which isn't many, they both have equal grand, you know, they keep, Tom Hardy's got the scene now, but now DiCaprio has it, now Hardy has it. And that level of being able to switch was really intriguing and really well done. And when they weren't on screen together, Hardy was still progressing the story in an awesome way. So I picked Tom Hardy to win, that should win. However, I picked Sylvester Stallone to win. Um, the Academy will always, depending on the, the category, they will either award the person who has been nominated like five times and finally deserves an Oscar, or they will de award the underdog. And when Stallone, like I said, had been revealed to be playing Rocky again, people weren't too fond of that idea because we kind of thought Rocky was done. Um, but no. No, he was not. And so, you know, at the Oscars, you heard, at the nomination release, you heard people cheer when Stallone's name was, nom was you know, said. And, and I just think that they're going to give it to him because of his career because he's had a rough few years and he definitely needs something like this. Somewhere, somewhere, Stallone's agent is shoving all these shitty action movies off of his desk because he now knows Stallone can act. Whew! Alright, leading actress. Um, I did not see Brooklyn. I didn't see Sha... 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 But my pick for should win and will win Brie Larson. Brie Larson has won everything. That is that is a fact. She's won. She's won everything, and deservedly so. Back when early award talks were were being talked about, um, you know everything was Kate Blanchett for Carol, and no one like no one had even heard of Room. I don't even know how I ended up going to see Room. <coughs> wow, no one had even heard of Room. This thing grossed like nothing. No one had seen this movie, but the movie happened, and it came out of nowhere, and it just went up in, in the, um, oh my god, in the award predictions. And Brie Larson was fantastic. Her comparison with, with Jacob Tremblay was phenomenal, and each of them were able to have their own scenes. Tremblay was in every single scene, but the scenes that Brie Larson were, was in, she just fantastic and no one had heard of her she was in short term 12 and train wreck but she really wasn't this heard of actress and when she popped up in this she was fantastic and no one saw it coming um she's going to win and she definitely should win uh lead actor do i do i need to talk about this category is this something like I need to... So my pick for Will Win and Should Win is Brian Cranston for Trumbo. Uh, Cranston just shown he was fantastic. Way better performance than Walter White in Breaking Bad. No, it, it's it's DiCaprio. Yeah. For Will Win and Should Yeah, it's DiCaprio. Guys, look. I... Yeah. I've been... I, I'm not one of the people who has been just so angry that DiCaprio has never won an Oscar before. I actually did a video that never got uploaded because of a corruption in saving. Um, of, should Leonardo, has Leonardo DiCaprio deserved an Oscar before? And I think there are two questions off of that. And one is, has Leonardo DiCaprio had a deserving performance before? And the answer is yes. But, has he ever been the best out of the category that he's been in? And the answer to that for the four times before this he's been nominated is no. He has not. He is now. He should win, he will win, although, guys, I can't tell you how hard I would laugh if he doesn't. I mean, that would just be fucking hilarious. Michael Fassbender was great as Steve Jobs. The, the, what he did with Steve Jobs and showing what he was really like was awesome, but guys, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. If you didn't bet money on DiCaprio, you, you lost money. You, you lost money. Director. Best director was also kind of interesting. I... Battled back and forth between George Miller and Alejandro Inuritu because of the- oh, okay, hi there, bye.
There we go. We're back. We're good. We're good. Hi, Leo. Hi there. Um, because Ridley Scott was nominated, which was crazy. I totally thought he was going to be nominated, or win, actually, but he didn't. Um, and I picked... I picked Inyari 2 for my will win and for my should win. He took this movie, this crazy idea, this thing that, that no one thought could be brought to the screen, and the, just the things he was able to direct, the shots he was able to maneuver, um, with help, obviously, from Emmanuel Lubetsky. While George Miller did that as well, George Miller had a budget and something to work with, and, you know, this movie was shot in the middle of nowhere, and it was just crazy what he was able to do with some, some of those long shots, like, to get to the boat scene that he was able to direct, that was crazy. And he's gonna win. I, I, I didn't like Birdman. I didn't. I, I'm, I'm among the few people that didn't. I didn't think it deserved Best Picture. Maybe it did deserve Director. But this is going to be the first time in a while Director has won consecutively, I think. And Best Picture. I'm gonna start out with Shogun. And I picked Room. I picked Room uh, mainly because, like... Again, no one had heard of this thing. No one had heard of it. And now it's nominated for picture, director, uh, actress, adapted screenplay. It's probably nominated for some other things. And it was just a fantastic movie. I think Creed should have won Best Picture, but Creed wasn't nominated, so whatever. Um, it, it was it just shone through everything. Is it going to win? God, no, it's not going to win. It's not going to win. What's going to win? I have a bet with Max on this. It's going to be The Revenant. Here's why it's not going to be Spotlight, is because two, there are two reasons. One, Spotlight is too controversial right now, and 12 Years a Slave was controversial in, like, 1860. This is controversial now, and I don't think the Academy is going to take that route, especially with the whole Oscar so white thing going on, and I'm not even going to talk about that. And also, the second reason is because the Academy loves The Revenant. They love The Revenant, and you know how we know how. We can tell because... The Revenant is nominated for 12 things. Tom Hardy popped up out of nowhere. It's nominated for 12 things! When was the last time a movie was nominated for 12 awards? The Academy loves this movie. And it's gonna give it Best Picture. It's going to happen. Should it? Probably not. But it's gonna. And I'm not gonna be 100% upset if it does. So guys, in two weeks, we're gonna see the Oscars. Finally. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be one of the, like, for the past, last year especially, Patricia Arquette, J.K. Simmons, and Julianne Moore, like, in three of the biggest categories were locks. Those weren't even, I was sitting there like, All right, I know what's going to happen here. This is the first show where a lot of the categories I generally don't know. And I'm really excited. The Spirit Awards are coming up, but who, who gives a shit? Um, not me. I'll watch them, but whatever. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. What do you think is going to win all these categories, or some of the smaller categories? I haven't seen all the live-action short films, or the animated short films, or any of the short films, or documentaries, or... Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me know what you think is going to win. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.